There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. God damn it. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. And you still don't know where that song is from? There was an old lady who swallowed a spider. It wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider <laughs> to get rid of the fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. I guess Robin, where's die. that from? Do you, have you heard of this? I've heard the song, but I couldn't tell you where it's from. Is this, a ch- is this a child limerick? Please, because he's been saying this shit since the morning, <laughs> and I've never heard of this nonsense before. Oh, uh, Here's the thing. There was an old lady who swallowed a bird. Oh, how absurd. She swallowed a bird. There was a man <laughs> who had a sitcom, put some things in some ladies' drinks. His name is Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it goes. I think, I think that's how it goes. What the heck? <laughs> and now he's in jail, but he got out. There was this old Cosby stand-up bit that I was telling Chia about uh, that made me laugh. Where he, he's talking about how till he was like eight years old, he thought his name was <laughs> he thought his name was Jesus Christ because his parents would always be like, "Jesus Christ, get in here." Jesus Christ, what are you doing? And he's like, I thought my name was Jesus Christ and my dad and my brother's name was God damn it. Because my dad would be like, God damn it, what's wrong with you? Jesus Christ, get in here. And he said one day his dad looked at him and was like, God damn it, what is wrong with you? And he was like, Daddy, I'm Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? People forget though. Listen, terrible, terrible fucking human being, by the way. But when you look at his stand-up, his shit was pretty fucking next level genius. Like we're not gonna talk about Bill Cosby, Dave. And so. gotta tell you something, man. <laughs> I love me some R. Kelly. <laughs> we're not gonna talk about R. Kelly's music. And whenever I sing an R. Kelly song, I just imagine that I'm singing a Filipino's cover of it. Okay. <laughs> Let me say something. I have my Yeezys on. I'm listening to R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm quoting Bill Cosby stand-up. I'm struggling what to do with my Yeezys because I feel like no one They're cares. They're comfortable. They're so comfortable. They're so comfortable. And like I feel like no one really gives a shit if I wear my Yeezys. But also I'm like, am I like, is this like the equivalent of like a MAGA hat? Is a Jewish person going to see me wearing Yeezys and be like. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we, we already bought the shoes. The money has already gone right, to them. Right. It's pretty much done. All right. You know what I just realized? In the way that I say, if I'm singing an R. Kelly song, I'm just singing a Filipino boy's cover of it. Because Adidas still owns the rights to the Yeezy designs. They just have to pay them. Right. So I feel like, I don't think they have to pay them, dog. I think they can they can literally just drop them shits if they want to. They, they went through some kind of um, uh, legal dispute and they mm. do have to pay them. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. Well... Uh, write in the comments if I'm correct because I, I, I think I read that, that at first it said that he didn't have to mm-hmm. and then later on he made like a either they gave him a payout or they have to pay him royalties or something okay well I'll just say this is the re-released Adidas Yeezy and not the support of I think they're so comfortable they're the best they're so fucking comfortable I love my Yeezy yeah, and they feel so good on the sides because of the fabric and the mesh yeah. it's great but Adidas also has some like Yeezy esque shoes that aren't Yeezy is called Oswegos, which I fucking love. Oswegos. Why do why do why do people do the this shit? What does that do? It does absolutely fucking. Nothing. What is the point? I don't know. I, I, I'm 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 assuming from like back in the day, um, or maybe I think an old Korean person told me this. Oh, if you're just listening, I grabbed a soju bottle and I'm making a little. Tornado. They used to stir it up because. Like sold you back in the day was number one. It was a lot stronger mm. and it wasn't as clarified. So there'd be like sediment. So you're just shaking it oh. up. So I think it's just an old habit from sold you back in the day. This is what I, I think this is what I was told from an old person. I can't remember. But <clears throat> uh, a lot of like older, older Koreans, they always talk about how the old soju was so much better mm. because number one, it tasted different. And they said that like the new stuff is a lot sweeter, but mm. they don't really like it like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it was a, just a different formula back in the day. But they'll do this. Um, Thing where you crack it open and you can still do it now where you'll take this you twist this right don't cut yourself and then 
I forgot what it was. It was like the person who fl- – you do a game. Like you flick it until it comes off. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Dude. And then the person who flicks it off is the person that loses. And then they just like a – Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so a little game that we do. Hmm. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors right now. Go. What the heck? You don't do the, the pounds? I let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. I just go straight. Okay, fine. Mukji pa. I win. Okay. Would you like some soju? Yes. <laughs> Mukji pa is the Korean version. Oh yeah, you're younger, so you're supposed to pour it. I learned that from you. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot about this. I hate this so much. <laughs> and you're supposed to turn away in shame. No, you're an idiot though, so I don't. <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have to do this. There once was a spider who fucked her insider. <laughs> oh, bars. And now she has spider babies. This is how they rhyme songs now. Um, were you ever like? Thank you. <laughs> were you sipping this or shooting this? I have to look away from you. <laughs> in shame. So do you. You know, in Thai people don't really have a um a liquor. You guys have Chang beer though. We have delicious Chang beer. I was trying to find something the other day because you know, like you know, Japanese people have sake and Korean people have soju and um and I was trying to think. I'm like, is there like a Thai liquor? I'm like, no, not really. I feel like if you went to Thailand, they probably have something. It's like something that's not commercialized. Yeah. Right. Because our, our obviously we have soju and people drink this shit like fucking water. Oh, that's what I need to do, dog. Go to Thailand, fucking research what their shit is out there, and then, bring, and then it bring it over here and make some money. Dude, oh, have you seen this shit? I'm not sure if y'all saw this, right? Um, somebody that I personally really, really loved watching. One of my favorite food shows of all time is Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern. Love Andrew Zimmern. That motherfucker weird as shit. Do you see how sexy he is now with his beard too? He looks way better because before <laughs> he just looked like a like an actual penis. Yeah. So thank God he grew the beard out. Mm-hmm. But Andrew Zimmern, number one. He eats the weirdest shit, and he, not he doesn't just eat it for entertainment's sake. He loves it. Yeah. Like whenever he sees like dick soup, he goes, "Oh my god, this is so <laughs> good! This it's cartilaginous." Not weird, David. Culturally unique. No, it's fucking weird. I don't care. Culturally diverse. Mm-mm. This motherfucker craves the weirdest shit. <laughs> but then he can't eat spam and walnuts. He's disgusted by spam, yeah. Like he ate a walnut. I remember there's this uh, one girl that he always uh, links up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's in Taiwan or is it China? I think it's China. Mm-hmm. And then she had him try this cake. He bites into it. He goes, oh, what the hell? She goes, what? It's a walnut. Right? He goes, I hate walnuts. I'm like, bro, the scene before you literally <laughs> ate Pig pussy. He's like, pass, pass me the pig pussy so I can wash this down. <laughs> oh, oh, God, thank God. <laughs> but this fool went to an, uh, this one episode, he went to Cambodia. Mm. And this fool, one of the most popular street foods that they have that's really fucking delicious apparently is this ground tarantula that's the size of this fucking mic. <laughs> like this fucking big. And they deep fry that shit and they season it. Mm. It looked crazy. Mm. Would you eat that shit? I always assume that um, big bugs like that, when they're cooked, have the same consistency as like a shrimp or a crab. So he says it tastes like soft shell crab. Yeah, so I would be down to try it, yeah. I, I think I would too, but it's <laughs> hard to... <laughs> I think it's like... Ah! <laughs> but but um, look at how a, cra- a crab's face is kind of creepy too when you really look at it, dog. Oh, that's kind of facts though. You huh? know what I'm saying? Oh, so shit. I feel like deep fried, I think the fact that it's bigger... And it's deep fried, and you, they probably, you know, pluck the eyes off and shit. It probably won't be as uh, as jarring, right? So she puts, like, sugar, chili, and then um, this chicken soup packet mm. as, like, the seasoning for it. And then it's deep fried, and then she sautéed it in that. That sounds amazing. So the flavor <laughs> profile, spicy, sweet, salty, yeah. sounds fucking amazing. But he was he was obliterating that shit. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker, dude. I got to look that episode up. Yeah, I'm so... You know, um, Bizarre Foods was the inspiration behind, like, the show I was doing with Thrillers called Acquired Taste. Mm-mm-mm. Where, because, you know, I also have my whole thing I used to say where, you know, where you, I feel like if you eat animals that other people don't usually eat, you get, like, superpowers that other people don't get, you know? So I, there was a time in my life, and I, I still kind of do it, where if I go to a restaurant and I see that they have, like, something weird on the menu, I will always order it because I want to try it out. Like... One of my favorite Italian restaurants in L.A. called uh, Osteria Mozza. Oh, Nancy Silverton. Yes. They used to have a, uh, I don't know if they still do, but they had a 
like a cow brain ravioli. Ooh. And I'm like, let me try that shit. And then you got smarter. And then I got smarter and I learned how to move. Move. There once was a cow <laughs> who had a brain. <laughs> And then Tim ate it and became insane. Whoa, David So with the bars this year. Let me tell you guys. I don't know, man. Are you trying to are you trying to like go be a K-pop artist or something? Cause I'll tell you, guy, you're really uh stepping it up, you know? I'll t- I'll- <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me tell you something here, guys. <laughs> You're really just tapping it up. Um, I'll say this though, and I'm putting it out here right now. I'm putting it out in the motherfucking <laughs> ether. By the time this year ends, I am going to be physically in the best shape of my fucking life. Is that what it is? It's going to be. I mean, these doesn't help, but <laughs> I was like, hey, we can eat some fried chicken tonight. I'm like, all right. Um, <laughs> But I am going to be in the best physical shape of my fucking life. I'm not sure about like being ripped or whatever, but in terms of athleticism. So uh, I, I think I really do care about health a lot. Mm. Uh, not so much in terms of like the aesthetics part, mm-hmm. but flexibility, strength, mm. and then kind of living a good quality life as I get older. And I, I see that now where, you know, a lot of friends who I grew up with or, who, you know, they were very athletic when they were younger yeah. and they never cared about their health because a lot of the stuff that they were that was given to them was like God-given talent. Mm. They just had fast metabolisms. Mm-hmm. And now that I see that they're older, they don't have great habits and they just look and they feel like shit. Mm-hmm. And they're older than me. I don't want that. Like mm. I want to feel good until, you know, time just takes everything away from me. Right. So, you know <laughs> you I mean? made that sound so depressing. It <laughs> is. Dude, they will. Time takes everything away, bro. But it gives. Oh, it gives knowledge. It's giving. You know what? That time, it's giving life. <laughs> yeah, it's it's giving it's giving good life vibes. It's giving experience. <laughs> <laughs> People say to uh, like California girls have a very specific cadence, mm. which I didn't really think about until I saw. Like we were talking about TikToks and yeah. how you don't like with the Australian people when they hear the no, yeah. they have that with like California girls. Like they have a very specific cadence in the way that they speak. Yeah, I mean, I think you know it kind of bleeds. I'm not gonna lie. I think California. You know, we even we have a specific kind of cadence too. You know, especially I mean, it's, I think it, it does come out more when I'm talking to girls. But you know, when you kind of like when kind of everything kind of ends with like a question mark like that. You know, oh. like you know, I went to the store the other day, and this guy he wasn't really like my favorite. I, that's a thing. I think that's a California thing. Dog. I think it's a little influence from the Hispanic culture, <laughs> right? So I went to the store. Oh, I guess you're. You know what I'm I saying? guess you're kind of right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's a little bit from like like the Mexican people from here. Like it, they just bleed into everything because you know Mexican shit is all over the place here. <laughs> so like you know like what are we gonna do today? Like I don't know, maybe something. For, I don't know, maybe have something to eat later or <laughs> or whatever. Or. Damn. So I was thinking Valley Girl, but you kind of chulled it up for me now. <laughs> yeah, kind of, huh? Yeah. The other day, like this guy, I don't even know, but like, oh yeah, I guess so, huh? Interesting. Very interesting observation there. Yeah, and then I like you know like I I like suck this dick or like whatever. <laughs> and I, Fucking, it was great. And yeah, shit. and it's like, and he ate my torta, and it was like, very. <laughs> he ate my torta. <laughs> <laughs> he, grabbed, he grabbed my conchas and shit. Like. <laughs> um, um, I was gonna say to rewind tortas, accents, cholas, Mexicana. No, before that, before that, you were talking about. What was it? Um, Thai alcohol, spiders, fast forward, bizarre spiders, foods. bizarre foods. There once was a man who yeah. has ADHD. <laughs> he constantly forgets everything. God damn it. Oh, well, anyways, <laughs> new subject completely. <laughs> I was watching Dog Naked and Afraid last night, and there was a part that I, oh I cracked God. up at. And I was like, I have to tell David about this. Um, so I don't know. Have you ever seen this? There's one Asian guy that's ever been on Naked and Afraid. I've never seen an Asian dude okay. on Naked and Afraid. There's one Asian dude, and um, but he was actually adopted by a white family, okay? This makes sense now. He was on Naked and Afraid. And the first episode he was on, I felt bad for him because his partner was like such just like a rude, like, like not just you couldn't. 
interact with this no person. No team cooperation. She was just, she was a bitch, dog. Like I know better. So she here's what here's what I mean. Yeah, he was kind of dumb because she would be like, "Hey, make sure you drink water." He was like, "Hey, I'm good for now. I'm good for now." And so she was getting very frustrated with him because this fool wouldn't drink water. And <laughs> just dying. So he's at one point he's like, "Oh fuck, yeah. I just got a little lightheaded." She's like, I've been telling you to drink water. She's got getting livid at this dude, right? But eventually she becomes like very, just kind of mean spirited toward this guy. Like very diff. like if you watch it, you're like, God, why doesn't he just like fuck it? Like just like kick her in her cooch, you know what I'm saying? So and then have sex with her. And then like just make sweet love to her and patch it up, you know what I'm saying? Give her that good Asian D and show her what it's all about, you know what I'm saying? Do some fucking gymnastics with your jizz and like just show her the good mm-hmm. life. That you sounds know? like a good fucking time, dude. Yeah, but- uh, so, but he was also kind of like, <laughs> you know, he was an interesting guy. I wouldn't say he was like a strong competitor, right? So anyways, fast forward, they brought him on the, uh, I don't know if you saw the Naked and Afraid XL in the cold. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Impossible for anybody to survive that, by the way. So he's on one of the teams of the, of the cold, uh, series, right? Where they have like the different squads and okay, sometimes yeah, they yeah. come together or whatever. And so... <laughs> He's been doing all right. He's been doing all right, but his heart has actually been kind of, um, uh, uh, his heart rate's been too high. His resting heart rate has been too high, whatever. And um, again, the medic's like, hey, make sure you drink water. Make sure you stay hydrated. This, this fool, guy's already pissing me off right oh, now. Oh, dog, he's very irksome, all right? The motherfucker just won't drink water when everyone's telling him to drink water. He's not like my mom right now. My mom <laughs> never drinks water. <laughs> He's fucking pissing me off right now. I don't know who you are, guy, but I'll fuck you up. <laughs> He's the only Asian. So anyways, dog, this is what made me laugh. This is what made me laugh. They ended up, they had to medically tap him because his heart rate was just too high, right? And they were like, this is not safe. We don't have what we need here to take care of you if something happens because of your heart rate, right? So he's talking to camera. He's sad. His team is sad. And he's like, you know, uh, I'm I'm getting medically tapped because of my heart and... Usually, people say that's one of my best assets, but today, it was my weaker one. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, bruh, what kind of fucking corny corny lifetime movie quote? Why why do you talk like this in real life? Like, what the fuck? If I was the medical team, (laughs) I would literally just forget to leave him there. (laughs) What is wrong with this motherfucker, <laughs> dude? So the reason why I'm leaving is because my heart would usually is my best quality. And he looks directly in the camera. <laughs> Fucking one tear. I feel like, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I think that this comes from him being adopted by a white family. His identity crisis. No, 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 no. White families often speak in the way TV shows do. Mm-mm, like mm-mm. shit that you would never hear people say in real life. White families, they always talk like that. You know what I'm saying? Like the... I've got something on my mind mm. that I need to get off my chest. Mm. Like really like those idioms. Yeah, like why where do why do you speak like this? Like who the fuck talks like this in real life? I feel like it's just generational because like think about it like this, right? Cuz uh Korean people too, they speak in a lot of idioms as well. Mm-hmm. So that's just from like cultural past. We're relatively new here. So mm. that's from like family and generational shit, right? right so right, right. there's like a, fr- a phrase in Korean is like Chi, the, the, what? I was about to say chi as tree. Tree가 뭐야? Oh, 나무. The 나무 나무 밑에서 이 벌리면 감 떨어지겠어? So that means like, if you waited under a tree mm-hmm. and you open your mouth, do you think a um, a persimmon will fall in it? Mm. Which is like, closed mouths don't get fed. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like, Korean people will speak in these weird phrases. That's what my mom always says to me mm-hmm. when, I, when I would be really lazy. Yeah, She was like, you fucking thing, if you open your mouth next to a fruit tree, a fruit's gonna fucking fall in it. Mm. But in this case, it's the opposite. In this case, it's, do you think that open mouths will get fed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I just, uh, it was so, it's such a fucking cornball moment for me. I just, I, I cracked up. It, I just picture you hopping in the screen, you sock him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, Speaking of, we're going to take a break. Bye. (laughs) 
Fellas, do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom? We've all had those nights where we get a little too nervous or maybe had too much to drink, okay? There's nothing worse than not being able to put the stick shift in drive when you need it the most. But have no fear, Rex MD is here, spreading cheer even when you have had a few too many beers, okay? Rex MD makes getting generic and brand of Viagra or Cialis easy. Everything's online, even the prescription, and they deliver it discreetly to your door. No waiting rooms, no embarrassing trips to the doctor, no insurance, and no co-pays, all right? Look, we've all been there sometimes you've just sipped on a little too much you're trying to get it in and your little guy just won't participate in the way that you need him to right well we could all use a little help sometimes all right you'll be getting fda approved erectile dysfunction treatments as a 90 percent cheaper rate than the doctors yes 90 percent cheaper it's fast simple and cheap and you can access your u.s licensed rex md physician anytime you need afterwards all right so all you got to do take action now and take advantage of their best deal yet by heading to rexmd.com slash dudes, okay? Our exclusive deal will save up to 90% off where you'll only pay $2 per dosage. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for our listeners to get started. That's rexmd.com slash dudes for up to 90% off. Give the gift of pleasure this year with RexMD. What's up, y'all? I just want to say real quick, this episode, of course, is always brought to you by goodybrand.com. We just dropped these new shirts, the Tim shirt of the month. They're like super random ideas that I just came up with. Goody was like, Tim, go do whatever you want to do. Come up with some random idea. You were free to do that. So I got these shirts. They say titties. It's a calculator. Remember how you would put like boobies in the calculator? Well, it says titties. <laughs> it's in black and white. These will never get restocked. They only drop this month. Goodybrand.com. Check it out. You know what I hate about that whole situation? Uh, Why did he have to be the one representation for fucking our people? I know. The one fucking time. But I'll tell you this, though. If you guys go on any YouTube channel, you look, look up survival shit, it's just Asian people living. <laughs> just doing regular shit. There's a there's a survival channel that I find, and these people just make crazy shit out of nothing. Mm. And that's just their everyday life. We would kill it because that's just whatever to us. We eat anything, dog. It's fucking whatever, dog. I, I specifically remember it. People think this is a joke, but there was a, an episode of um, not Naked and Afraid, Fear Factor, and mm. they had to eat tripe. Really? Yeah, and that was the challenge. It was, it was, it was tripe, and it was mm -hmm. boiled. Mm -hmm. And they were. This guy was. He was throwing up, and my mom was like, "What's the problem?" <laughs> she goes, you know what's so interesting, dog? <laughs> it really is. Um, I think it's 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 just America, like American American America Americans that are very like weirded out by shit because it's all kind of just you know it depends on where you come from, um, just in the world, right? Because like. So Thai people have, uh, they use a lot of tripe in like boat noodles uh, or um, if you've ever had like, you know, lap or uh, just. Oh, they put uh, tripe in lap? So not lap specifically, you can, but uh, okay. So there's a, a lap equivalent where it's, um, it's steak. They use steak instead of ground like chicken or beef. And it's called uh, nam tok, which is, which is just. Literally translated, that means a uh, waterfall, but uh, it's just they use steak in the lap. And also, look, I, I hear a lot of food channels calling it larb because it says that on the menu. It's not larb, it's lap. <laughs> it's just Thai people don't know how to spell their words in English. Doug, I've literally got into, not an argument, <laughs> but going back and forth with somebody because they didn't understand that. They're like, mm. well, why is there R there? I was like, there's a lot of things that you don't understand why it's there. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking foreign language when it translates over. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know, on Instagram and TikTok, people say LARP. I was like, are they Thai? <laughs> or are they fucking white? Right. Or fucking Mexican or Korean or Japanese. It's like, if it's not a Thai person saying that, then it's probably not true. You right? can make the same argument of like, why is it quesadillas? And why, is, exactly. why isn't it quesadillas? Well, it's quesadilla did. because that's how they spell their shit, right? Yeah, and they fucking DM me back. They're like, oh, I looked it up. You're right, it is lop. I'm yeah, you like, fucking idiot. Yeah, you dumb. Don't fucking disrespect Thai food like that. It's one of my favorite <laughs> cuisines, dog. <laughs> lop. So, lop. So, so Nam Tok, you should try one day. It's really good. So sometimes they'll put um, uh, some fucking tripe in there, right? And so many people are like weirded out by by tripe. But then, you know, a lot of Mexican taco trucks. Menudo, will, baby. Menudo. They'll have fucking tripe tacos. Um... Like a lot of a lot of like um, Vietnamese people have it too. Vietnamese, a lot of different Hispanic cultures use tripe. I remember one time Cardi B, 
she like posted some soup with some like big ass chunks of tripe, bro. And people were grossed out. And she was like, this is what I grew up on, you know? So specifically, recently, we were ordering some injera uh, for dinner. And um, a chia usually gets this thing called uh, tips, which is just like the, like a, you know, like uh, chopped up beef and, and the sauce. But I saw some shit. It was like chopped up liver and beef and tripe and that you eat with the injera. And I was like, let me try this shit. Um, fuck, what was it called? I forgot exactly what it was called, but um, I ordered it. And I tell you, bro, this shit tasted like some fucking lab. But warm. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm like, wow, it's crazy to eat this like East African dish that literally just tastes like the shit my mom would make. You know what I'm saying? The, the thing about tripe for me <clears> is that <throat> it doesn't really have a bad flavor. I don't like the texture. Mm. Right. So I won't eat it. I won't. <laughs> like. <laughs> you said texture funny. Your, your, your bottom lip went down. You went texture. <laughs> like on Rick and Morty when their lips turn into a little, <laughs> the little, little thing. <laughs> They're like too little. Yeah, they're too little. <laughs> Just a W. <laughs> That's what your mouth looked like right now. <laughs> a little high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the texture. The fucking, the Futurama crab guy? With the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like the texture. <laughs> Um, do textures throw you off a lot? Yeah, that's why I don't like um, the tendon. Like, oh. it, it's too gelatinous for me. Mm. Like, the, the flavor isn't terrible. I just don't like those textures. Like, it just, it's, it's not my shit. But does it taste bad? No, it doesn't taste bad. It just, it's just, just I don't really fuck with it like that. But I do love liver, though. I oh, with, you fuck with liver? Yeah. One I'll of get my down. One of my favorite beats that they have, like, in Argentinian restaurants is actually uh, sweet bread. Oh, that fucking, that we, little. That little organ meat. Mm -hmm. That shit is one of my favorite, favorite things to eat. That with chimichurri because it's so fatty. Mm. It's fucking delicious, man. Mm. I love fucking grilled sweetbreads with just some salt and then over some charcoal. Chimichurri sauce, man. Yo, I follow this fucking random dude on Instagram, dog. He, I, I think he's just an at-home chef. But he makes these fucking steaks and tacos, bro, with this, like, really thick chimichurri sauce. I got to show you, bro. I think he's in, like, Salt Lake City or some shit. Some, some random ass city, fucking Utah. Um, like, well, I know Utah's a state. But some random, random up there city. And I want to just fucking go because his shit looks bomb. Dude, man, I, I love, like, when I was doing chimichurris and stuff, I think one of the things that used to fuck me up was uh, kind of looking into too much, like, authentic recipes, right? But like, the, uh, to be honest with you, when I started looking, I started Googling shit and people were putting like posts or whatever. Everybody has, everybody's moms make chimichurris a little different, mm. right? So whenever I looked for a recipe, every fucking recipe was different. Like, this is the real one. This is how my mom <laughs> made it. And I'll read another post. He goes, this is the real, this is how my dad made it. I was like, well, how come your guys' recipes are different? Mm. It's just because, you know, everybody cooks things differently at home, mm -hmm. you know? So when I started making chimichurri, I was like, I'm just going to make it however the fuck I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say it's authentic. It's just my shit. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite spots is out in K-Town. It's just an Argentinian uh, Korean spot, mm. right? And so he used to get flack from people, right? Like people who are like Argentinian. And they go, well, this isn't true like chimichurri. And he goes, I'm was born in Argentina. Oh, <laughs> take that. It's like, you. why is it not Argentinian to you? He said, that's not how my dad makes it. He right. goes, "You." so you were born in the States. He goes, i from Argentina. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? He goes, there's so many Korean uh, Argentinian immigrants there. Mm -hmm. like, like Korean uh, Argentinians. There's a shit ton. Mm -hmm. He goes, Korean people make it this way in Argentina. Right. Where it's more vinegar based because we like bright acidic foods. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I like his chimichurri better than the typical Argentinian um, mm. chimichurri because it works with my palate because it has more acid for like the short rib the sweet breads and shit like that mm -hmm. but like he would always have to like tell them like okay i'm from there <laughs> like did uh, you know that the largest population of japanese people outside of japan is in brazil brazil that is out of six years of college that's one of two tidbits of information that i maintained everything else i fucking forgot <sighs> But that is one of the only things I remember from college. Know this and you will survive. Yeah, but listen, this is a whole bunch of Japanese people. <laughs> Which makes sense, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and um, apparently like just after after the fucking yeah, uh, the bombings, uh, a bunch of Japanese people just went everywhere. Mm. Um, and a lot of them ended up in Brazil. I forget the specific reason, but yeah, so there's a shitload of Japanese people in Brazil. Uh, I heard you can get bomb ass uh, sushi, like authentic sushi, and of course, fire fusion. And of course, I'm sure the fusion people just look, oh. 
fuego. Uh, muy fuego. I don't know what that is in, in por Portuguese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, this is Spanish. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Um, and so uh, that's a, a little tidbit of information there for you. I... So, you know, South America is some place I want to visit. Pour me some more soju now. Pussy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. God. Not for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to go to South America, as do I. I want to go to South America. Um, a couple of people I know have definitely invited me. Mm-hmm. Like, I got family out there. Let's go. I was like, well, I was like, yeah, I plan to go. But if our time doesn't I'll just go by myself. And they're like, don't go by yourself. Don't go by yourself. <laughs> like, listen, like, it's like South America has a lot of great tourist spots. He goes, but it's really not the safest place. <laughs> Bro, I wouldn't even go to TJ by myself at this point. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, shit. Well, because, you know, you only see these quick little clips yeah. on, on Instagram. And, you know, white people, they tend to go anywhere. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. But he was like, yeah. I mean, if you're staying on resorts, then maybe. He goes, but. Nighttime, it's a little scary. It's a little dangerous. He was like, if you go, make sure you go with me because my family's out there. Mm. And then we speak, I speak Portuguese. So you don't speak Portuguese. People will take a run on you. Yeah, so, bro. And uh, I don't know if that's personally true, but this is what my friend says. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm a chill. <laughs> you know? Um, I also, look, if we ever both are divorced at the same time, uh, Costa Rica is supposed to be the spot for prostitutes, dog. Like, I'm <laughs> I got heard in terms of prostitutes, <laughs> like beautiful prostitutes. I heard Costa Rica is like the where, shit. Where is Carnival? Um, Carnival is, is a thing that kind of happens at, in a bunch of places. I think Brazil is a, probably lit for Carnival. Um, okay, so there was a specific type of videos I used to love watching. <laughs> and I thought this shit was uh, fabricated. Okay. Right? And you know, years ago, very popular porn. Girls gone wild. Of course, yeah. Right? Where some, you know, at towards the end, these girls would be hooking up or they'd be having sex. But other times, just girls showing titties with beads. Mm -hmm. So they would have a similar one. But it wasn't Girls Gone Wild. It was for the Carnival Festival. Mm. And people would just be sucking dick and fucking. I'm like, damn, how much did they get paid? But, you know, I know a few people who went to Carnival. They're like, no, I've literally seen people suck dick in the middle of the street, or not in the middle, like in an alleyway or something. Like, mm. it's just like a crazy fucking party. I've never been to it. But I was like, wow, I need to go to this thing. For the food, we're going to film an episode of When Foodie Calls. And check out the delicious cuisine. Just the amazing food. Yeah. I wouldn't know what to do with all that anyways. I would just freeze up. Just eat it. Oh, okay. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would, if, a, if a beautiful, voluptuous woman comes up to me and she uh. goes, a Portuguese is a sacadique. <laughs> well, that was Italian. I don't know. <laughs> but I would literally freeze up and I'd be soft and I would run away. You want to hear some shit? All right. Fucking my boy Benji, the enigma that is Benji two times. Yep. Was, I do, enigma. <laughs> I do believe he was in Brazil for something. something and he was at some club. And uh, a girl like walked up to him like in a club and was just like, uh, like I, you're so cute. <laughs> that has never ever happened to me, a single day in my life. Right, dude, and like I think I don't know, I don't know if they, I forget the exact story, but that's also I've seen this happen to Benji. Back when I was like, we were at a club in Hollywood. It's because he's mysterious. He is fucking mysterious. Even among friends, nobody knows anything about him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a funny ass story about Benji, the mysterious Benji. If y'all don't know Benji, he's, he's a dude I know. He used to um. Like he used to rap a little bit in the in the fucking early YouTube days. Um, he was a part of uh, like the, the squad with Lil Craze and them. And now he then he moved to LA recently. He's a big part of Goody Brand. He's like a big like kind of like he's like a Dame Dash. Everybody knows Benji. Everybody fucking knows he's he's he connects a lot of the dots out here in LA. I have no idea how he does it, but he fucking does it. All right. So when he first came out here to LA, he was living with me for like a month, just kind of test out if he likes it. And then somebody I forget who asked him this question. And this perfectly represents Benji, the absurdity and the fucking balls that is Benji, right? So I was like, what are, you, what are you doing out here in L.A.? Like, well, like, what have you been up to? And he's like, just whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I know. It's like, <laughs> what? What? But also it's like. Okay, go ahead, bro. And all the girls got horny hearing that <laughs> shit. What do you do out here? Whatever I want. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, and that's all it takes, you know? 
I don't have that mysteriousness. <laughs> I just too, I can't do it, man. Some people pull it off really fucking well. The way they talk, their cadence, they're just like smooth as fuck. Yeah. I got none of that, man. I have to be goofy. If I can't be goofy, I can't talk. I'd rather lean into the goofy. It's easier for me. Than, than be the guy that's like, I was always told my heart was my best. Oh, God. Ass- Jesus Christ. Was my best asset. <laughs> Why the fuck wouldn't he drink water? <laughs> Why won't you drink water? I don't know what's wrong with him, dog. He's different. He's different. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're thirsty. Your lips are chapped as fuck. I'll just get it later. <laughs> dude, Naked and Afraid is one of those things that I thought I could do until we went to our last. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Okay, so look. Oh. We filmed an episode of When Foodie Calls. It's been very, very rainy out here in Los Angeles, California. Um, you know, and people always make fun of LA people like, ah, y'all get a little bit of rain and you panic or whatever. But this has been kind of crazy out here. So okay? this, is, this is like, cause Sacramento gets pretty rainy, right? Mm. And it's been terrible out there. Like our people have been flooding. Even here it's been flooding too. Yeah. But I'm talking about this shit was pouring. Yeah. Like consistently. It's been like this for the past couple of weeks. And yeah. you got to understand like LA isn't built for this type of rain. Right. So the infrastructure isn't made for this. Mm-hmm. So like I saw videos of like the 405 or some shit and cars are swimming in that shit. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. We did this fucking, so we decide, or we, <laughs> Tim decided <laughs> that we were going to do this anime expo, shoe con, Korea con, foodie, Asian American event. It was some random, it was, okay, so apparently this is the 44th one. It was the Asian American expo. Never heard of it. Me neither, right? But it was like all these different things had come together for one con and it was like, K-pop, sneaker con, fucking, uh, 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 like you said, whatever the fuck you just said. And, um, but, and it was at the Pomona Fairplex. And I know that that's a lot of big buildings. So even though it was raining, I thought, okay, the most of this shit's going to be inside, right? It was so not. We did not dress up for rain weather. I had like a hoodie on and a light thing on top of that. David still had a fucking sweater on. A sweatshirt and a vest. vest that wasn't vest. waterproof that at was, all. So, but here's the thing. To get to the food, which is, you know, the main shit of our show, we had to wait in line at these fucking food trucks, and it's pouring rain outside. Super hard. Ugh. So not only was, like, the line so packed, but it was so wet, and our dumbasses, not one of us brought a fucking umbrella. For some fucking reason. I don't understand why I didn't bring an umbrella. We have umbrellas. Exactly. Dog, not only do I have umbrellas, and I was telling you this when we were waiting in line, I have so many coats that I never wear out here. Waterproof, snowproof, big puffy fucking skiing Adidas jackets that I don't wear out here. And for whatever reason, I'm like, I'm going to keep it light. (laughs) I don't know why either. It it was fucking cold too, by the way. And I think like in L.A., this is just cold, cold. Because Sacramento gets pretty cold, right? Almost to the point of like freezing and, you know, snow. Yeah. It's not like Minnesota cold. I don't know why the fuck people live out there. <laughs> but <laughs> after we were done, I had to sit in the car and warm up because we were in the rain for like two hours straight. I couldn't close my hands <laughs> because it was fucking freezing. Bro, I'll tell you how stupid the whole day was. I got out of my car, literally parked, walk into the tram to take me to the event. One minute into this shit, dog, I fucking sludged through a big ass puddle. My feet and socks were wet as soon as I got there. The worst feeling ever. We're standing in line waiting for this fucking food, and I looked at David at one point. I'm like, I am miserable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, he said, This is the worst day of my life. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> it was, I was pretty fucking miserable, too. <laughs> you have to understand how long these lines were. Add on top of that the amount of rain. The first thing we ate was ice cream. Yeah, we were starving. Because it was the only thing without a line. Yes. So I looked over. I'm like, I'm going to get some ice cream for us, dog, because this is some bullshit. I'm so hungry. And it was delicious. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of the best things we ate that day. It was a Hokkaido-style ice cream, and it's like this fucking, like, if you could imagine a churro that is hard enough to kind of, like, uh, it sits up by itself. And they put the ice cream on both sides of the little ends. And, oh, it was so good. It was fucking delicious, man. But I was miserable. 
bowl. Mm. Just fuck it. And Tim, too, of course, at a sneaker con, couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Because everybody was just coming up to you. And I wanted to buy a pair of shoes because my shoes were freezing cold and wet. I was like, let's go in there and just buy any pair of shoes. But, like, we couldn't move. And sneaker con is like, you know, that's my demo right there. Yep, you yep. Know? You're so. going to find out, too, like, when this episode comes out, there was something that I was doing that day. Just because I think I was just so miserable. <laughs> like, you just have to make it fun. I just, any fan that came up to me, I just kept choking him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, David got a little violent this episode. I, like, I grabbed him by the scruff of the shirt. Like, what the fuck are you doing here? And most people understood because it's a joke. They know me. You know, yeah. they know my brand. I just fuck around a lot. And so we were cracking up, gave them hugs or whatever. But there was one person that didn't understand the joke. He goes, hi, David. So, and I grabbed him like, what? And he looked like I was going to kill him. Well, he's probably a listener of the, of the podcast. And he's heard all these stories where you fucking slam people into walls and, and fucking eat their knives and shit. So it's like, he's <laughs> wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you stab people in the face with pencils. You eat their knives. You fucking, uh, 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 you fucking catch multiple Korean pot stickers in a plate. You know, <laughs> and we'll talk more about this after the break. Everybody is so nice. They get to not be, uh, oh my God, a show. What I found out from a lot of people <clears throat> is that the reason why they get stunned is because they don't realize how big I am. Because mm. I, because majority of the time when I do videos, I'm sitting down. Mm. And so when I sit down, you know, I'm just making a lot of jokes. I'm really goofy. So for example, I just sold my, my camera to a fan of mine and mm. I sold it for him for like a couple hundred bucks cheaper than I was going to sell it to like a few other people. Mm. This is a fan. I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Let's get it for cheap. So <laughs> the first thing he says, he goes, Dude, you're a lot bigger than I thought. I was like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big guy. So I'm like 6'1". So I think a lot of the times when they see me, they're just like, oh shit, he's mm. just a little larger than I actually thought. So when I grabbed him, I think he was just like, oh shit. Man, when you were fat, you must have been terrifying. Yes. <laughs> Just big and tall. <laughs> He's gonna eat me. <laughs> Just wait till I get yoked. Bruh, I'm actually okay, so people always it's 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 both ways for me. People will always give me the, oh, I thought you were gonna be way smaller because I um you know, I talk about how little I am. Or they're like, oh, I thought you're gonna be way taller because I'm so like, confident. They expect a fucking larger presence physically, you know? Mm -hmm. And um I don't know, just a little attempt, five, four and a half. Um <laughs> But I am also trying to, uh, you know what? I actually just as recent as fucking hour ago, dog. Like um, I follow a dude. He's a he's a he makes music, and he went away for like three months and just posted a new video. And this motherfucker's body is looking tight, like not even buff, but like a good like you know toned up. Like he's looking slim. And like you said, you know, for me, so I used to only care about the aesthetics. I didn't give a fuck if I was healthy. I was just trying to look good on camera, right? But now that I'm actually getting old and like my body is kind of like tweaking a bit, like my shoulders are kind of fucked, like my knee. Dog, I accidentally hyperextended my knee a little bit too much the other day trying to put the car seat in the in the, <laughs> in the the baby seat in the car and I felt like, I'm like, this is some dad shit, right? Because now my knee will like randomly buckle a little bit and I'm like, fuck, I really need to get this shit in order because I'm getting old for real, you know? You got to stretch. You got to do Ugh. all that other stuff too. And you know what it is, man? Like somebody put this in really good perspective. It was, it's not even so much that you're getting old. It's more along the lines that when you're young, you just don't care. Yeah, we're so, not taking care of it. Yeah, it's like you just don't care when you're younger. Like if, because I remember too, it's like, yeah, wait, when I was younger, I fractured both my ankles. I did all sorts. <laughs> like I actually got hurt more when I was younger. Mm. It's just, I just didn't care. 
I'm like, whatever. But now that we're older, we have shit to do. Mm -hmm. So when we hurt ourselves, we go, oh, fuck. Well, now I got to sit out for a little bit. I know. When you're, when you're younger, you sit out. Who the fuck cares? You're just jacking off and watching fucking TV anyway. I mean, I'm still doing that now. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, the other night. So my shoulder's been tweaked. Both my shoulders, like not my shoulder, but whatever you would call this muscle connecting your my del shoulder. Your deltoid. Okay, so both of these are kind of fucked. I have no idea what happened, right? But, um. So it's, it'll be little stuff that I do that like really hurts. Like if I'm just lifting stuff from this way, like it, I can't do it, right? And so last night I was cooking up a little steak. So the shit was getting a little smoky in the house. And I was trying to lift the this and oh, I could not do it to, to open the window. My shit fucking hurt. So then I, so I get up on the kitchen counter so I can put this window up. And as I'm getting down, I like scraped my calf on the fucking counter. I'm like bleeding. And I'm like, God, I'm pathetic. You just start crying. Yeah, my steak's burning. <laughs> I thought the fucking episode was the worst day ever. This is the worst day ever. No, but honestly, like you said, that shit made us realize we could never do Naked and Afraid because... Oh, oh, dude, <laughs> yeah. I was miserable <laughs> and there was food everywhere around us. <laughs> I was still miserable. I can't do it, dude. There's... So Naked and Afraid has done episodes where they had to do it like in the tundra where it was cold mm -hmm. and nobody survived that. It's impossible. These motherfuckers are trying to eat berries and then they see a, a grizzly bear in the distance. I'm like, get the fuck out. <laughs> get out. You're dead. A grizzly... There's a video of a grizzly bear that attacked a man that was uh, on like one of those snowmobiles or whatever mm. and literally swiped at his face and ripped his face off. Eee. As he's talking, his face is dangling. Eee. And then he fought him off with like, like a flare gun or some shit. And I think he killed the bear or some shit. There's one fucking beast ass dude that uh, him and this girl survived the, the tundra shit. And they were actually kind of thriving out there, dog. This is guy Steve. I think his name's Steve. And this other girl... And they were killing it. So when they do that cold tundra shit, they also give them like a little, just like a little fucking like piece of fur to, you know, give them a little chance of survival. Something. Yeah. And they were killing it, dog. I think like they killed a fucking, a beaver or some shit, some fucking, you know, varmint oh, out poor, there. Poor beaver. Whatever, some rodent or varmint and they were able to. <laughs> some varmint. <laughs> some varmint. They dug in the snow and used that as like a freezer so they were able to store the meat and like keep it for like to eat later. It was pretty lit. That's the, probably the biggest advantage of being in the snow is be able to like store the protein in the food and keep it fresh. Dog, on this one I was watching recently with the stupid Asian guy, um, <laughs> one of the guys found a coyote, a coyote that had like just like, I don't know. Why. I've never heard somebody call the coyote a coyote before. Oh, a coyote. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you know what's funny? When I said that right now, I was like, I said that weird. <laughs> you still continued with it? And I was like, and so I, that's why I said it again, because I was like, something didn't feel right. Coyote. Cause, coyote. Because after I said coyote the first time, I was like, why was that weird? And then I spelled it out in my head, and I was like, no, it's coyote. So I said it twice, and I didn't understand why it felt weird. Until maybe you're you, correct. Maybe I'm Koi erect. Oh, yes. <laughs> My penis is very koi erect. <laughs> it's, it's shy and hard at the same time. <laughs> koi erect. Uh, yes, coyote. What the fuck? Okay, so he had found one that had just died. Like, I don't know if because it was frozen or because it was too cold or what, but he fucking found a coyote that was like chilling in the snow, knocked out, and he's like, oh, it hasn't been dead too long. They took it. They ate it. Wow, how lucky. That's very fortunate. Yeah. Wait, why would that coyote just die, though, unless it was diseased of some sort? I don't know. Maybe he was heartbroken. Also, too, those animals that eat other animals with protein, they have, I forgot what type of thing that they have that you have to cook the meat very, very well. There's no medium, mm. medium well. It has to be well done. If not, there's like a specific virus that'll mm. fuck you up. Maybe that coyote died because, you know, normally his heart, heart. was... <laughs> His heart was something that was his best asset, but this time it was weak. It was very weak. <laughs> all his all his pack was like, you know, man, you got you got heart, man. <laughs> you got a lot of heart. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What about this? Would you do naked and afraid? Hell if, yeah. What if they paid you a hundred thousand dollars? Do I have to survive the whole time? You have to at least survive four days. Uh, um. Four days is pretty long. So if we're taking out the aspect of it that like, you know, because like I said, I'm kind of against reality, doing reality. But if I was over that shit, um, or if they were doing like a celebrity edition or Naked and Afraid. Um, so a part of me has always wanted to try it. I couldn't do it. I think the biggest issue for me wouldn't be the hunger part. It would be the cold, wet part. 
That's the, the most mosquitoes in the oh. dude. That when I see their bodies, yeah. the, the next day it's just welted with a million bug bites. Yeah. It's unreal how much they get bit. Yeah, it's I, disgusting. Are you somebody who's prone to mosquito bites? Because I yes. am. Yes, because yeah. the people, fatter people are typically because they just breathe more. Really? I heard like the carbon dioxide, like when you breathe in body heat, is the thing that they're attracted to the most. Mm, so I run hot. So I also get bit up a lot. I just know that if I'm next to Bart, I'm fine because they'll go after Bart. Interesting. Because we've been on like hikes in Hawaii and usually I get bit. Mm. And then as we're about to start the hike, Bart already got bit twice. Because he runs super fucking hot. You mean you only got bit twice? No, Bart got bit twice. I didn't get bit at all if I'm next to him. Oh, But if, if he's not next to me, I'm the first one that gets bit. When I was in Thailand, I got some weird fucking skin thing from mosquito bites. Or I don't know if it was from mosquito bites, but because they used to light me up, right? Like my whole body would just be lit up. Like one time specifically, fucking, I got bit up on my whole body. My parents put like, uh, you know, repellent on my whole body except for my eyes. Motherfucker bit my eyelid. You know what I'm saying? It Damn. Was, yeah, it was like that, dog. Like I was, I was lit up. Oh, specifically one time, dog. I remember I, I had like a couple bites, like in my, like my ass crack. So I remember they put the calamine lotion on my ass crack, and I'm like, they're like, here, air it out. So I'm like four years old, holding my ass hole open to a fan while the calamine lotion dries off, and just crying. I was like. <laughs> how terrible the situation was. And like my older cousin, I remember he saw me crying. He's like, mom, Tim's crying. Cause I was just so frustrated with life. Right. But <laughs> I say all that. <laughs> what a funny image right now. It was terrible. But so one time we came back from Thailand, like a week later, I, um, and I was still kind of suffering whatever weird after effects from like whatever these bites got me. But it was weird, dog. It was like some shit where if I, like put a, a like if I scratch into my arm, it would bubble up in the shape of that scratch. Oh shit! And like I could literally draw a star on my thigh with my nail, and it would bubble up in the shape of a star. And it was like that for a month. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know what it was. I'm never going to Thailand, dude. Go! Oh, you'd love it. Uh, I'll tell you this: when I was in Taiwan, I married her because she lived there. She made us made sure that I had bug spray on me at all times. Mm -hmm. She goes, before we leave this house, you, you have to put on bug spray. If not, you're going to get eaten up. And I didn't get bit once. Really? Yeah, because I just sprayed it everywhere. And I had like the, the wristbands on the ankles because mm -hmm. they like to attack the ankles. Yeah. So the what people don't know, did you notice like this summer there were so many mosquitoes? This summer? Yeah, this past summer. Not really. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't live in a, you live next to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> but... What, what what people found out was so I, I think like in 2010 or something like that, mm. there was a shipping container full of bamboo trees that mm. were that was imported from China. Well, guess what was on, on the fucking bamboo trees? Mosquitoes. Mosquito eggs. And so that specific strand of mosquitoes, like you'll see them in LA now, where they have like stripes on them. They're weird. They're, they, you could barely see them. They're so small. And everybody's legs were getting eaten up. And I was looking at. I was like, why the fuck is my only my fucking ankles getting eaten up? So it was a specific mosquito from China that came over. And they've adapted not to fly up because people could swat and kill them. So they only bite your legs. What? Yeah. So we got fucking Rona from them and we also got the mosquitoes. <laughs> I'm so upset. I, now that you bring up mosquitoes, I probably, I take it back. I don't know if I would do Naked and Afraid. Yeah. Because they love me so much. <laughs> First episode, you with your butt cheek open. <laughs> oh, God. But it's just, it's just, it's opened up just to open it up. It's not even any bug bites. I just, I just have my asshole open up. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing that? I just want to show you my butt. <laughs> I, uh, because I remember, you know, have you ever just had a mosquito in your room flying around and you're trying to go to sleep and you see it? Yeah. And you fucking, you put your head under the sheets, but then it gets hot. You poke your little head up so it doesn't bite you and it fucking gets in your ear. Ugh. What I do is I turn my phone around and I put the lights on and then it goes towards the light. And then I you get kill it, it. And I kill that motherfucker. <laughs> Mosquitoes are the most useless fucking insect on earth. There's no biological reason for why they're around. Yes, there is. No. So we can get dinosaurs. Okay. So they could be in the amber. Yeah. No. Mosquitoes, if they literally died off the face of the earth, apparently nothing changes. Really? Nothing changes. Usually, like, there's, like, a specific reason why something is in the ecosystem. Yeah. Mosquitoes are from Satan. Like, there's no purpose for them. Then what the hell? I don't fucking know. Like, the original theory was that it was there for them to spread disease to for population control, but that's oh. not true, apparently. God. Well, well guys. This ends this episode of Science with David. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, thanks for watching. Um, we love you guys, and we appreciate you tuning in. 
And uh, there was an old lady that swallowed a mosquito. And it was so neato. She swallowed a mosquito. mosquito. Turns out she was Mexican. She ate a burrito. <laughs> Flaming hot Cheetos on that burrito. Okay, bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> Dude